Welcome to a new vlog and today we'll be taking a look at the thermal camera from Infiray. Quite an interesting model I might say because it's targeted for PCB inspection work and we do a bunch of that here on the vlog YouTube channel as well as generally speaking in uh, this lab as part of my professional consulting work. Now because Infiray is an OEM, they make these uh, thermal uh, sensors, anyone can take this and rebrand it, can make their own rebranded version of the app, package it differently, claim different specs, but upon checking a few of the online options, seems like the best option is just to get the original version that looks like this, and uh, there are several uh, resellers, I'll be providing you with uh, some ordering links in the description below. I got mine from a reseller called xinfrared.com and they seem to be uh, a really reliable uh, source. Don't be fooled by some of the cheaper options which might not include the optional uh, magnetic macro lens. Uh, in the same price, which is crucial for PCB inspection work. And additionally, you'll find a special discount code which you can use on your order and that will be provided in the description of this video. So I got this thermal camera shipped really nicely in a double padded box and uh, these were the contents and we got a box for the camera and another one for the optional macro lens and a nice microfiber cloth. And while I'm opening this package, uh, let me mention a few important specs. Uh, it offers a high resolution of 256 by 192 pixels with a 25 Hz refresh rate and a huge temperature range of minus 20 to plus 550 degrees Celsius. And you might ask yourself, are there no regulations in place for the refresh rate of these thermal cameras? Because obviously there is the risk of using them for military purposes and uh, that regulation is only in place for US made technology but since these come from Infiray which is based in China they don't face the same regulations for export and so us hobbyists can enjoy these higher refresh rate thermal cameras. And like I mentioned this, this camera also offers a, an optional uh, macro lens which makes it perfect for PCB inspection as I will be showcasing in a few moments but if we are talking about PCBs let me also briefly mention the sponsor of this video PCBWay.com which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Volvox channel. Check out their website if you plan to order some PCBs with excellent quality and fast turnaround time. So included in the package we get the camera module, the optional macro lens, an extension USB Type-C cable, a uh, soft microfiber cloth which is uh, offered by our distributor and a uh, soft bag for uh, carrying and protection of the camera. Now having a dedicated EVA carry case would have been nicer uh, but I guess this is where the manufacturer decided to optimize cost but nonetheless uh, a cheap EVA case like the ones destined for headphones can be found on AliExpress and you should be able to adapt one of those. There yes. are two versions of this camera, one for Android with USB Type-C which is the one that I have here and there's another one with a lightning connector compatible with iOS devices. Now what you see here is the Android version and you will find the P2 Pro app on the Google App Store and if you think there's a red flag seeing that description or publisher field in Chinese, it's okay. If you don't trust it, you can install this on your backup phone, but this is a reputable company from China. Now, the first thing you'll notice, especially if you've owned or seen other thermal cameras, it's how small this thing is. Now, Infiray claims this is the world's smallest thermal camera, and I do believe them because I've owned or seen both a FLIR and a Seek, as well as some other Asian uh, sourced mobile thermal cameras, and none of them was as small as this one. I mean, just look at the uh, size of my uh, thumbnail. And with the uh, included USB Type-C extension cable, you can easily see how this can potentially uh, become really useful for uh, sliding into uh, very tight places, enclosures uh, for inspection of stuff that isn't uh, obviously or readily accessible. Attaching the macro lens is very easy because it has some integrated uh, magnets so it kind of snaps uh, in place uh, and with this lens attached now your working distance or focal point is about 30 millimeters away from the camera so that's both a uh, good and a bad thing at the same time, uh, it's good because it allows you to get in there and focus on the smaller stuff on your PCB like your O201 resistors, 
but it's also bad uh, at the same time because uh, it limits your field of view so you'll only be looking at a very limited area of your bigger PCB unlike uh, other options like the DIT Spectrum Owl camera which I reviewed in a previous video I'll link it on screen right now that one offers a much wider field of view while at the same time allowing you to focus with that manual adjustment ring on very uh, small components on your PCB but it's not exactly a fair comparison because that camera costs three times as much as this one we can compare it to the Unity UTI 260B which I reviewed in Volo 358 uh, this one is similarly priced but it's a standalone camera and uh, by default it does not include a uh, macro lens for close-up PCB inspection so there is however an optional lens that Unity has released and if you guys are interested in that I can probably do a separate video where we test this Unity camera with a macro lens but as it is with uh, uh, the uh, optional macro lens that you get with the uh, Infiray P2 Pro it, it does a much better job for PCB inspection than the Unity with no macro lens uh, because this one just can't focus up close and um, this one can. After plugging in the camera to your smartphone and allowing permissions for camera access you should be greeted with this image uh, well the same type of image hopefully without my face in it and it starts in the black and white mode uh, but I have switched this to the more usual thermal uh, camera view which is the iron red. You can immediately notice the uh, high uh, refresh rate on this camera I have no doubt that uh, this is 25 Hertz uh, refresh rate there is a slight delay between me uh, moving my hand in front of the camera and uh, it updating on screen it's likely in order of tens of milliseconds maybe it's noticeable but not bad as in preventing you from properly using the camera and there are other color uh, palettes to choose from I personally only use iron red and I would be curious if you own a thermal camera uh, let me know in the comments below if you find the other palettes useful uh, myself I don't it's got the usual options you would expect for example in this correction menu you get access to settings like emissivity object distance and ambient temperature which is something you don't typically see on other cameras they would typically measure it internally not ask the user to provide it but this offers you this flexibility in the image flip menu you find options like orientation uh, you can flip or rotate uh, or mirror the uh, image um, I just find the rotation option very useful because you might be inserting this camera for inspection into some weird uh, angles and rotating the image could be very useful in the mode menu you get three options high image quality wide range and auto so wide range mode actually enables measurements up to the full range of 550 degrees celsius while high image quality limits it to something like 200 degrees but it boosts image quality and you get much less noise in the mid in, in the image and I guess auto mode just uh, switches between these two automatically when there is an object hotter than 200 degrees celsius in the image it doesn't do any image merging with the phone camera as you would get on a FLIR camera but it does offer a picture in picture option which you can use for you know general orientation but yes I do agree that image uh, fusion like uh, you get on a FLIR camera is much more useful to have in terms of temperature measurements you get a couple of modes with a few different options in basic mode it picks up the min max and target point temperature and shows them on screen but if you want to uh, switch to the uh, professional mode uh, you get these tools on the bottom where you can manually place up to three points up to three lines and up to three rectangle zones at the same time and it will show measurements from these on screen as you can imagine this tiny screen will get pretty crowded if you enable all of them uh, but it does allow you to do that it can take snapshots uh, it can record videos and uh, take snapshots while recording video uh, it can also record audio uh, which I think is very useful because I, I often find myself doing uh, these thermal measurements or analysis on PCBs or various systems I'm building and I would like to record audio with myself explaining what I'm measuring just for further uh, reference when I download those videos on my PC there is a burn protection mode which is an option that is enabled by default and will automatically protect the camera if it's exposed to something very hot by automatically closing the shutter to protect the sensor 
and you also get manual control of the shutter if you want to manually compensate. Generally speaking, the Android app that uh, I have tested this camera with, it does everything you would expect. It runs smooth with uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, one thing I noticed on the phone that I was testing with, which is this uh, Galaxy S10, is that it must have been pretty CPU intensive because uh, the phone uh, got warm during usage and there was also a noticeable battery drain while using the app and camera. But one important note here is that I was also doing screen recording at the same time. So I would say the battery went from 70% charge to 60% charge in about 20 minutes of usage. It's, it's not a big concern uh, and the uh, screen recorded, uh, recording of the, the phone screen certainly amounted to that. Uh, but it is something you would expect and plan for with an external power bank, for example. Some people might also be wondering if uh, this camera can be used generally on any USB port like on Windows or Linux on a Raspberry Pi for example and I haven't done any testing of that but uh, there are discussions on various forums with uh, people successfully connecting these on Windows and getting the default 200 degrees range black and white image as a video stream and you know all of the other functionality is likely obtainable through an SDK which uh, you'll have to get from Infiray but it does open up possibilities for building stuff like robots uh, based on a small uh, Linux uh, computer um, and you could add infrared vision capability to your robots and considering how small this camera is uh, I think a lot of people will try to do that now the macro lens of this camera is the most interesting thing here for people like myself who often do PCB inspection because with the help of this macro lens I can get really close to an IC package and uh, uh, attaching this lens gives you about 25 to 30 millimeters working distance and with the resolution it has this uh, is close enough to see where you know the different areas of a dye run at different temperatures or you can see actual hot spots on the silicon dye or maybe different dyes inside the same package and this is the benefit of the higher resolution the higher frame rate and uh, close-up focal point this is something that clearly can't be done with a handheld unit like this one from Unity which uh, I reviewed in Volog 358. I mean it, it's a great little camera but it just can't focus that close. There are some DIY options for improvising a macro lens and there is also an original Unity upgraded lens that can uh, that you can use for macro shots but you get, don't get that in the package and it wasn't available when I originally got the Unity. Um, by the way, I might get my hands on one of those macro lenses and showcase it in a future video. Uh, if you think that would be interesting, just let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, do a video on that macro lens. So with this uh, infrared camera, you can get really close to the PCB and get those uh, tiny details. You can see very small components. If you have a short on an 0402 resistor, you can pinpoint that with the macro lens and you can certainly debug a PCB during a repair successfully and at this price range I'm thinking this is actually the cheapest camera on the market that can offer this kind of capability with this resolution in this small package. Now the Unity camera has the same resolution likely using the same infrared sensor uh, just with different settings, diff a different form factor and with the external lens uh, we can likely obtain very similar results on the Unity camera uh, but it's a different form factor, um, probably a better one for those working regularly in the field, this is a more rugged camera but you lose some of those nice software advantages that you get with the P2 Pro. I will not be doing a, a teardown of this camera, there are pictures online if you're curious of the insides it's not that interesting if you ask me there's just a couple of uh, small PCBs in here and the thermal sensor module from Infiray but I would much rather have this uh, working in, in one piece because I quite like it. And this pretty much concludes my review of this camera. It's a great little unit if you can't afford the desktop options like the DIT Spectrum Owl or you don't need the uh, field uh, ruggedness of the Unity camera. Then. This is uh, the one to get for the electronics workbench or other general use, uh, get it without the macro lens. As usual, you'll find links and a discount code for ordering this camera from Amazon in the description below. 
and please use the coupon codes when purchasing this camera because you'll get a better price. Now, if you found this video useful, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support me making more videos like this, you can do it on my Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.